So can certain webcams make you look a bit thinner? Well, I'm not talking about any effects to modify the video, to squish or to stretch it. I'm also not talking about different webcam angles for different vantage points. You've probably all seen them where people hold their cameras up high. Nope, just straight up looking at the webcam at about eye level like you would look into a mirror. And if the webcams that I'll show in this video do work and you want one, well, I'm gonna tell you which webcam you should probably get. And I'll also attempt to explain why certain webcams can subtly make you appear a bit slimmer. Let's go. So I'll start by giving you the key to all of this, at least in the webcam form factor and for tight shoulder up framing like you would do normally in front of your computer. And that is webcams that have wider fields of view, like 90 degrees or more. Well, they'll tend to make you look a bit slimmer. And if you're wondering, you know, most webcams that you do pick up and buy, they have around 70 to 80 degree fields of view. So I'm gonna go against all the rules of YouTube video retention and just go ahead and start by listing out a few webcams that have 90 degree or wider fields of view. And I'll also overlay each of them on top of an image that I captured with my proper camera. So you can see how they compare with my current Sony camera that you're looking at now with the 23 millimeter lens. So we'll start with the Logitech Brio 4K, which claims to have a 90 degree field of view. I say claim because it seems to be wider. Uh, if you look at the Razer Keo Pro, which I'm showing right now, that is a 105 degree field of view, which is kind of comparable looking to the uh, Logitech Brio 4K. Then you've got the Anchor PowerConf C200 webcam that has a 95 degree field of view. Then one of the lower price ones on the list, the Lenovo Essential FHD webcam, which has a 95 degree field of view that goes for less than $30 and around the same price, the Nexigo N60 with its crazy 110 degree field of view uh, optics. And then one of my favorites, kind of an unknown brand called Mikose. It's a 4K USB manual focus lens camera. It's more or less like a CCTV camera that you can buy, but you have to figure out a way to mount it with your own kind of tripod or quarter 20 mounting. So I'm guessing that all the information that many of you were looking for, it was probably just told in terms of which cameras to buy that have this effect. But if you want the full story, you're gonna to wanna to stick around and I'm gonna explain more or less how this happens, starting with the camera and image that you're seeing right now. So right now, you're actually looking at an image not from a webcam, you probably guessed that. It's a Sony ZV-E10 with a 23 millimeter f1.4 lens. And I would say that my shape of my face that you're seeing right now is accurate for what I'd see if I was looking into a mirror, a flat mirror that's normal, that's straight up and down, and I'm looking at it in eye level. By the way, a 23 millimeter lens on an APS-C, a crop framed camera, is about the equivalent to a 35 millimeter lens with a full frame or DSLR type camera, which might explain why a lot of people gravitate towards 35 millimeter lenses. Now that's a proper camera with a big lens, which is important here because the glass and optics are working with quite a bit more space. If you think about a normal APS-C type lens, it's got somewhere between three and four inches or 100 millimeters of space. Whereas if you look at a webcam like this one, this is the Brio 4K, it might have a half an inch or less or 10 millimeters or so of space that it's got to work with to pack all the different lens and glass elements into that package. Now all these elements, basically they're bending and they're correcting images and light until they reach the camera's sensor. So naturally, and especially on a small scale, you'll get some image distortion, like a hall of mirrors in a fun house, if you've looked at those kind of mirrors where they stretch you or squish you. And you've probably also seen something called a super wide or fisheye lens, which is usually a lens that's under 15 millimeters or so, six to 12 meters is probably the common fisheye lens range on an APS-C camera or full frame camera, that tends to widen the view, but make the parts in the center of the frame look well stretched out from the center, like spherized images if you use Photoshop. So why did I waste the last minute or so of your life explaining lenses on proper cameras, but not really talking about webcams? Well, that fisheye lens effect is actually key to how these wide angle webcams get their wide angles. So let's say, for example, you took a balloon and you laid it flat and printed a grid on it. 
then you blew up that white balloon to see what the lines look like and they're no longer straight, kind of like you're seeing here on a spherized image. And that's part of what the lens needs to deal with. So then they'll start with an image that's like that, at least, and then the better ones do what's called lens distortion correction. You might see on some of the cheaper cameras where the vertical lines look a bit more uh, rounded on the edges. That means they're doing less uh, distortion correction on the lens. And you can do that with another piece of glass in the optical stack, and sometimes you can do that with the camera's firmware or kind of uh, image digital uh, modification. And the goal there is to typically get where the vertical and horizontal lines look straight again. It's basically taking polar points and then making them a rectangle again, if you've seen that effect in Photoshop, for example. And that's another key to the story because you can't necessarily get that balloon from its kind of inflated state back to flat where the lines not only have verticalness to them across the width of the image, but also the horizontal lines are horizontal and the spacing between the different equidistant points are the same. So if you look at the image I'm showing now, you can see that in the middle it's squished in a bit because you might want to overcorrect the middle a bit to be able to, across the entire frame, balance out that amount of distortion. So that kind of pulls you back in, it puckers in the middle a bit and gives you that slimmer uh, center section. And this happens to be about where your face would end up with webcam typical shoulder up framing. That's why it's a bit narrower in the middle and there might be still a little bit of distortion at the edges. This is why my hair in all of these 90 degree field of view webcams looks a bit taller than uh, it should, at least to me. And in uh, the Sony ZV-E10 with the 23 millimeter lens, it looks correct. I do try to stay away from sticking my finger into light sockets just to make sure my hair doesn't go any further up. Until now, I've just shown a few 90 degree or wider webcams and my proper camera with a 23 millimeter lens, but what about the other webcams and why am I doing this video in the first place? Well, first, I've got this strange fixation on purchasing and testing out webcams. It might be because I'm on Microsoft Teams calls around 10 hours per day each week. And recently I tested out all of the Logitech Brio lineup of cameras. And yes, the Brio is no longer just the one flagship that runs at 4K. There are now four different Logitech Brios and each camera had, by the way, a different field of view. So I'm gonna show each one of them. So the Logitech Brio 100 had a narrower 58 degree field of view, which will produce a wider face in this case. The Logitech Brio 300 has a bit wider field of view at 70 degrees, but it's more or less in the same normal curve as most webcams that are mainly 70 to 80 degrees field of view. Then when you move up to the Brio 500, which claimed a 90 degree field of view, I would say it's a bit less than 90 degree, or it might be because they're measuring diagonal field of view. Um, and that's why I didn't include it in the beginning because it didn't seem as wide as some of the others. Whereas when you look at the Logitech Brio 4K, which Logitech also claims to be 90 degrees or effectively equal to the Brio 500, which clearly it's not, it's much wider. And that's probably a hundred plus field of view. And you know this is this is giving you that uh, narrower face effect that I'm talking about in terms of the uh, image correction. But if I go back to the image of the Brio 100 and the 300 and the 500 and the 4K images with their 58 up to 90 degree plus fields of view, and then start to overlay them on top of each other, put them side by side, you'll see that my face looks progressively slimmer as the field of view gets wider. Then I remember there are similar effects with other 90 degree or wider lens cameras that I tested previously because I've tested a whole lot of webcams and I have a whole closet full of webcams actually. And one day I hope to stack all my webcams up and break through them kind of like the Kool-Aid man, but until that day comes, I'm gonna keep just buying more and comparing them and testing them. And that's why I felt really compelled to make this video as a person that also has a rounder face. I think I'm kind of paying it forward if you wanna change the optics and look of your face and shape of your face. And likewise, maybe you have a very slim or slender face that you want to broaden out. And for that, you could do something like use a 50 millimeter full frame camera lens or a 35 millimeter APS-C camera lens or you can pick up a webcam like the Logitech Brio 100 or 300 series with a 58 and 70 degree field of view respectively, and those should subtly widen your features. 
Now this video was a bit of a departure from my typical camera and microphone tests that I do on this channel and also work from home or Windows demo tips that I also tend to do, but let me know what you think and your experiences also in the comments. If you like this, give me a like, subscribe for related videos, and as always, thank you for spending the last 10 or so minutes with me.